Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have back here with us a returning guest, Ian Slater. Ian is CEO of Red Eagle Mining, which can be traded as RD on the TSX Venture and as RDEMF on the OTC. Thanks, Ian, for being back here with us today. Thank you, Jeff. Good to speak to you as always. Ian, Red Eagle just announced uh, some major news. Uh, you published a, a bankable definitive feasibility study uh, that showed a, an extremely uh, high IRR, internal rate of return, of around 52%. This may be one of the best in the junior industry at this point. Can you tell us more about how, how Red Eagle now fits in with this definitive feasibility study? Well, we were very happy with it. it we came in, in in almost every area better than the PEA, which was released a year ago, which is is rare. I think our uh, our uh, operations team, run by Bob Bell and and like a podium and Mind Development Associates, who put together the uh, the feasibility study, have done a great job. We've uh, significantly reduced the capex from 91 million to 74 million. We've redu we've done a better layout on the plant, so it's using only 20 hectares now, and it's designed to be ramped up from 1,000 tons per day to 2,000 tons per day in phase two for only another 14 million capex. And the uh, the cash costs were, were, were down slightly, which is um, a, a big accomplishment when you're going from a PEA to a, to a full feasibility study. Ian, when I look at Red Eagle compared to some of the other juniors with these high internal rate of returns, uh, Red Eagle seems undervalued with a current market cap around uh, twenty million. Can you talk about uh, your current valuation compared to some of your peers? Yeah, it's very frustrating. It is as well as the feasibility press release. We also also issued in August um, a press release that we received our, our mining permit. This is so. This is the the final mining permit that we need. It's the the. Um, the first one issued for a, a modern mine in uh, Colombia for decades, and the market, you know, didn't notice. So we have all of our permits in place now, subject to just one more, the environmental license, which we're working hard on and expect at the end of the year or early next year. Um, I think over over the last two weeks since the feasibility study came out, we've uh, we've held up pretty well. Where a lot of our a lot of the other companies really got hurt with this declining gold price. But uh, with the good numbers in the feasibility study, we've managed to um, slightly increase the share price on a lot of volume. Well, let, let's talk about permitting and what's unique about Red Eagle here, because you mentioned about uh, that you also had this news item that you received a permit and you're waiting for the, the final en environmental permit. Let's discuss Red Eagle's project uh, in the in the developing uh, pr 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 projects in Colombia. Why Red Eagle may have the the best shot at, at coming into production here? Well, really, what happened over we've spoken about it before is is what happened over the last cycle, where really modern exploration has only happened in Colombia in the last. Um, really, starting two thousand eight, two thousand nine is when is when the junior company started to go there. Um, and a lot of that exploration money was spent on on big bolt tonnage, low grade gold porphyries, which are which are not economic at the current gold price, so you, you couldn't finance them anyway, and and they're not um, to be a very long process to permit them in in Antioquia, where a lot of that money was spent where we are. So so in Antioquia, there's a very long gold mining history. I mean, it's um. For for uh, for thousands of years, I mean, there was gold mining in in Antioquia before the Spanish came, and then the uh, our project was one of the biggest mines in uh, in Colombia when when 400 years ago, and it was mined by this the Spanish mine, the oxides on the top 20 meters over tens of kilometers. Um, and these uh, so there's a long a long history of and then and then add it. I mean now I think on our original shear zone, the San Ramon deposit, which we're gonna build now, we found seventeen hundred old adits. 
So there's a huge history of, of uh, underground gold mining and, and lots of, of modern, smaller-scale underground gold mines in Antioquia. So they're, they're definitely possible to permit, and they are being permitted. Um, but but that, uh, that really the answer to your question is is a lot of the money was spent on, on bulk tonnage targets instead of high-grade targets, which, which are... Uh, Problem to a problem to build right now from the economic perspective and the social and permitting perspective. Let's talk a little bit about the social perspective. Some of these pro- mine projects have social issues, whereas the Santa Rosa project uh, doesn't have the challenges that some of the other projects have. Could you, could you discuss that a little bit? Sure. We um, there historically there's a, a lot of artisanal work on uh, on, on Santa Rosa. And there still are some some areas where there's artisanal work, but not at San Ramon where we're where the first deposit is and where we're building the plant. Uh, when we purchased the property in 2011, it was um, it was a small operating mine. But part of the uh, of the uh, terms for for the purchase for for actually paying them the funds was that they moved everybody on to a to a, a nearby mine that they also owned. So. So for the for four years now, there's been no artisanal work on San Ramon at all, and really they've they were mining the oxides, and most of the oxides have been mined out in that top 20 meters. And for them to um, to get into the sulfides, they'd have to put a shaft or a decline, and it would be a big job. They couldn't just uh, they couldn't just sneak in one day and and, and start up operations. So there's we don't have we don't have that same problem with with artisanal workers, which lots of Lots of the other companies working in Colombia do. Of course, there's, um, you know, Buratica is a great project, but there's a lot of artisanal artisanal mining going on there. Same with Grand Colombia's Mamato. So there's, uh, and those ones, it's um, they're they're going to be mined one day, but they're, uh, they're it's it's challenging dealing with the social issues, which we just don't have. And then on a, from our project perspective, we've. Uh, We've worked tirelessly now for for since since day one. So we've had we had stakeholder meetings with the local villages before we did started exploration. We've had 80 stakeholder meetings now. We have um, everybody is supporting the project. From I mean nobody lives right near where we're going to where the plant and the and the, and the portal are going to be. But anyone within 20 kilometers is uh, we've met with and. And agreed, and and we have support of of them. The the individual who owns the surface rights, who's just one individual, um, who we've leased the land from long term, and support of the the mayor and the uh, and the church, and in in Santa Rosa de Osos and the, the town, and and then uh, also in Medellin as well, um, which you can see with we're having the support of the uh, the secretary of mines and the governor by by granting our our mining permit. So like we've uh, we put a lot of effort into it, and and it, it's it's paying off. Yeah, I, you know, I was I was impressed when I saw the community support, especially from the local universities, on the development of the environmental impact studies. Could you discuss a little bit about some of the partnerships you've had down there with local universities? Sure. Yeah, the the, the local university in the town of Santa Rosa de Osos, which is a forty five thousand person. Um, town just uh, 10 kilometers away as the crow flies. So it's about a half hour bus ride, and that's where we're going to base. That's where we're going to hire most of our employees and base everybody. So we'll just uh, bus shifts in, so we don't have to build a, a large camp at site. And then we uh, we we, hi- we worked with that local university to do our environmental baseline work, which has just worked worked amazing. So when we have these local stakeholder meetings, we have local PhD students and professors who are presenting the the, the baseline work and the impact from the EIA. Um, and it's uh, it's it's just it's worked perfectly that you ha- you have local people that live in the community actually doing the environmental work, so they 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 trust it. It's, Ian, your technical team, let's talk a little bit about your chief operating officer, Robert Bell. You you don't need, like many of these other juniors, a big major to come build this mine. You can take care of this yourself. Uh, Bob Bell's built uh, uh, many different mines. Can you talk to us about the technical expertise that Red Eagle has right now? Yeah, when we... um 
Bob and I founded the company, and and from day one we you know we called it Red Eagle Mining, not Red Eagle Exploration. We were we were focused on on finding a project in Colombia that we could build. So from from day one, that's been the focus. I mean, we also have a great exploration team run by Jeff Dewey. Uh, but uh, from day one, Bob and I wanted to build this line, and and it, he is he's he's had the experience and. For everywhere from doing the feasibility studies and the permitting, he was a, a partner at Minproc years ago, um, to uh, to actually constructing them and and operating them. His last job before he joined us, he was a GM of Dundee's Chelapetch underground copper gold mine in Bulgaria, and uh, as well as Bob, uh, we we hired Alan Baker uh, uh, 18 months ago now, and he from El Dorado, and he uh, he lives at site and he's overseeing. He's our our project director who's overseeing day-to-day all of our feasibility work and, and as we go into construction, that as well. Ian, unlike so many juniors that don't have strong shareholder support, you have a strong shareholder in Liberty Metals and Mining, which owns around 20%, and management owns around uh, 12% of the shares. Let's discuss financing. That's a crucial aspect in building a mine. Uh, could you give us an update on what makes Red Eagle uh, have advantages in this area? Yeah, well, we have uh, we have quite a few term sheets from from a range of debt providers um, from up to sixty million, which would be eighty percent leverage actually. So uh, up to up to sixty million of, of debt, and your know, capex is seventy four million. So the plan is to raise 60 million in in debt and 20 million in equity, which is give us some a, a few dollars for drilling as well next year. So the plan is to drill some of the other targets outside of San Ramon, which we haven't drilled yet. Um, and that 20 million equity, you know, all things being being equal, uh, Liberty Liberty will um, will lead that. We'll maintain retain their 20 percent. So we'll take 20 percent of that financing and maintain their 20 percent as they've done. Um, in every financing since they've been involved with us, and they're, they're committed with us. They're they're committed to building this line. They're um, uh, you know they have they want a dividend stream, and 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 they they also have a royalty on the project, so they want their royalty stream. So Ian, the Santa Rosa San Ramon deposit should reach production still in the next eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. The 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 plan is to. Is to arrange the debt financing this quarter in the fourth quarter, um, and and have the detailed engineering uh, finished in Q1, and have the permit by Q1. So we have everything in uh, everything organized to do the equity raise, and as soon as we have that break ground, and it's um, nine to twelve months construction. So in the first half of 2016, we will be in production. Ian Slater. CEO of Red Eagle Mining, which can be traded as RD on the TSX Venture and as RDEMF on the OTC. Thanks so much for being back here with us today, for giving us an update on the recent, recently published bank, uh, definitive feasibility study and for giving us some goals going into the end of 2014. Uh, we look forward to it. Thank you, Jeff. Talk to you soon.